Cork Studios, located in beautiful Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the Hardison and Cochran Attorneys at Law podcast. The podcast is about North Carolina personal injury, workers' compensation, and disability law. Now here's your host, Bill Campbell. And welcome to the 10th Hardison and Cochran podcast episode. Today we're going to be talking with Ben Cochran about workers' comp checks. From speaking with clients and potential clients, we've put together some questions that are frequently asked of our workers' comp lawyers about workers' comp checks. This includes questions like, how are these checks calculated? And what happens if this check shows up late to my residence? Now, before we get to the interview with Ben, I have to read the disclaimer. Listening to this podcast does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and Hardison and Cochran. Hardison and Cochran does not represent anyone without first obtaining a signed agreement. The topics discussed in this podcast are for information purposes and should not be taken as legal advice. If you have a legal matter, please contact an attorney about your specific set of circumstances. Now here's Ben. All right, Ben, we're going to talk about uh, workers' comp checks today. The The first question, and, and I know many people, you talk to many clients uh, or potential clients about this, is uh, these checks, when they're coming... How are they calculated? What what, what uh, formula is used to calculate how much somebody's going to get um, or how much these checks are going to be written for? In North Carolina, the amount that is used to calculate a temporary total disability check or a lost wage check, what you do is you take into consideration the individual's average weekly wage. Now, in North Carolina, average weekly wage can be calculated several different ways. The easiest and most predominant is if an individual employee has worked for this employer for 52 weeks. If they've worked for 52 weeks, then you simply are able to take the average of those 52 weeks as the average weekly wage. So that's the most common method is to look at their wage history. If it's sufficient enough, if it's 52 weeks, you encapsulate 52 weeks. If it's less than 52 weeks, but sufficient enough, you can still calculate that um, using a, uh, pretty much a week-by-week week, uh, calculation. Um, this is all set up. It's pursuant to statute. Um, there's a particular enumeration that you look at in order to calculate the average weekly wage. When you say, okay, this is the person's average weekly wage over the past 52 weeks, in North Carolina, for temporary total disability purposes, it's two-thirds the average weekly wage. So it is 66 and two-thirds percent of your average weekly wage that you're entitled to for workers' compensation benefits. That is what's called your compensation rate. So the amount that you'll receive when you're unable to work is two-thirds of your average weekly wage. If you're receiving a check, who is this check coming from? Is it coming from the insurance company, the employer? Who's uh, sending it out? When an individual is receiving temporary total disability benefits, it is being dispersed by the insurance company. When they disperse these funds, they will utilize industrial commission forms in order to recognize them with the industrial commission. So once they begin payments pursuant to statute, they must file an appropriate form. There's two different forms that are utilized by the insurance company to show or acknowledge that they are paying out-of-work benefits. The first one is a Form 60, which means that they have admitted the employee's right to compensation, and they are going to pay, pursuant to the disability, the average weekly wage with the comp rate established on that particular form. So that form will identify when the disability began and how much it will be for. That is a Form 60 filed with the Industrial Commission. The alternate form that's utilized in this particular situation is called a Form 63. Now, the Form 63 is a particular form that can be used by the insurance company to delineate that they're going to provide benefits, but they're going to reserve the right to terminate those benefits at a later time if they elect to do so. Now, there's certain parameters within the statute and noted on the form as to when, if they fail to properly terminate those benefits, that that form 63 becomes an admission to compensability, very similar to the form 60. 
And these check are they actual? And you know, when when you talk about somebody getting a check or it's payday or whatever, uh, you know, somebody says I get my check today. Are these actual paper checks, or can they be deposited? You know, direct, direct deposit into a checking or, or or savings account. How how does that work? In workers' compensation in the state of North Carolina, in my practice and based upon my experience, ninety nine percent of temporary total disability checks are going to be paper checks. The predominant reason for that is because checks are distributed more likely than not on a week-by-week basis. There are often certain situations where the insurance company knows that an individual, due to the nature of their injuries, are going to be out of work for a significant period of time. So if that be the case, sometimes they put it on what's called auto pay, where they can go in their system and they can say, put this out four weeks at a time, and then I'll come back and fix it in the system and update it. So it's still going to be a paper check, but they can put it on auto pay so that it goes out on the same day every week to the injured employee. They usually do that at most at a four-week interval, and then they come back and reassess the claim. So it is a paper check. It's sent a weekly amount. On the check, it gives you a pay period, so it lets you know the benefits that you are receiving, the amount that you're receiving, as well as to what pay period it covers. So it has been rare circumstances that I have dealt with within my practice that somebody receives a direct deposit check based upon temporary total disability benefits. And the primary reason for that is is if somebody goes to their doctor and they get released to go back to work, the insurance company wants to be able to terminate the check so that they're not going to overpay the employee. Since it's on a schedule and they're all paper, obviously they're coming by mail. And, you know, sometimes mail's early, sometimes mail's late. What happens if a check is a day or two late? And what happens if it's really late going into like two weeks and and in time do, is there any kind of recourse for the uh the injured employee if their funds show up a week or two late what i tell my clients is that if you are receiving ongoing benefits from workers compensation through the payment of a temporary total disability check generally you are going to see that check come within a day of the same day each week So we usually tell our folks, if you normally get it on a Tuesday and you don't have it by your mail running on a Wednesday, you need to call us. Because that way we can find out and make sure that you haven't fallen off auto pay or that the adjuster has not failed to input you into the system. So that is what we tell folks. Unfortunately, it's very common that you do have circumstances where they change within one to two days. And that really be, depends on the, the nature of the claim, how often that individual is going back and forth to the doctor, um, whether or not the uh, injured employee is close to maximum medical improvement, are they close to returning back to work? All of those different circumstances really come into how closely the insurance company is watching as to how long they're going to have to pay that check. Because the sooner they can stop that check, the sooner they have great control over the case. Um, So they like to terminate the check as quickly as they can. But what about those cases that you're talking about that are 10 to 14 days late? Well, pursuant to statute, late payment penalties can be assessed 14 days after the benefits become due and payable. So unfortunately, your check's got to be behind two weeks before you're entitled to a penalty to be assessed and requested. So if I have a client that's two weeks behind, 14 days behind, what we'll do is once those 14 days accrue, we file a motion with the Industrial Commission for late payment penalties. The late payment penalty is 10% of all those benefits that were due and payable but not paid within 14 days. Now, when you're representing someone and they're they're getting a check uh, each week, you know, usually that's um, four times a month. Do, do you ever take any of those checks come to them and it's all their money, right? You don't take any of that money for representation. When an injured employee contacts us and hires us, our contract specifically governs 
what type of benefits we obtain in regards to entitles us to a overall fee. So our fee is based upon any benefits that we obtain or recover for you. In a situation where someone contacts us and they're already receiving temporary total disability benefits, or it's early enough on in their claim to where they know they're going to receive benefits, we do not take their weekly benefits. The individual's weekly benefits, those are benefits that they were going to be entitled to. Um, and so we didn't obtain those benefits for them. So we do not take a weekly check that they're already receiving. And we don't take a percentage of a weekly check that they're already receiving. The periods of time to where we are able to receive a percentage of a weekly check those are situations to where, number one, the person was not receiving a weekly check, and the defendants had specifically said, this person is not entitled to a weekly check. And through some means of litigation through the Industrial Commission, we have been able to get the injured employee awarded a check. At those particular times, the Industrial Commission will award us a fee because we were able to obtain that recovery for the injured employee. So if it's a circumstance to where the individual has a denied claim, they're not receiving any benefits, or their disability is denied, and they're not receiving any weekly benefits, and we're able to prosecute the matter through the Industrial Commission, those are the particular times that where if it, because of our services, that individual is receiving weekly compensation, then at that point in time, the Industrial Commission will award us 25% of the weekly benefits because but for our services, that injured employee wouldn't be receiving anything. We'd like to thank you for listening to the Hardison and Cochran Attorneys at Law podcast. If you would like a free consultation about you or a loved one's legal situation, please go to LawyerNC.com and fill out the contact form or live chat with us. For a full list of episodes, please visit LawyerNC.com slash podcast.